welcome back today we're going to talk about investigating windows 3x which is kind of hard room right on windows forensics and incident response so we are given a windows machine that got compromised and we are required as the incident responder to investigate how the attack occurred and we need to find out the various artifacts of the attackers so we're gonna have to uncover what happened in a nutshell so before doing that let's explain how the machine got compromised and what are the different artifacts we need to collect understand the event before diving through so the first thing as you will see in this challenge we have a process called explorer.exe which is a hooked process has been hooked by a malware this process once it started what it did what it did actually it created a registry key for persistence the registry key value contains an encoded payload the encoded payload in here spawned powershell so once powershell is spawned it kills other processes and connects to a c2 server the c2 server have uh, has ip and domain name as artifacts so what we need to do here actually the hard part is understanding the sequence of events what got executed first and what are what is the timeline of these uh, events in addition we need to decode the payload stored in the registry key it's encoded payload in page 64 after decoding the payload we will reveal information about the full code used to spawn the PowerShell process so after revealing the full code we will see the uh, connection to the c2 server see the ip see the domain name see the port and see that the, the payload actually killed other processes in the system such as the amsi protection malware interface and also the uh, other process that has to do with the printer and after that it connected to the c2 server also we will reveal information about the framework that has been used to create the payload so the framework was empire powershell empire has been used to create the payload in powershell so what happened first the malware got into the system and uh, hooked into another process created the registry key through explorer the registry key as i said earlier spawned powershell which actually connected to the c2 and killed other processes Thus, after connecting the C2 server, the attacker will be able to uh, indefinitely interact with the Windows. So we have to uncover all of this in today's tutorial. So let's close this one and go to the machine. So first thing, I'm going to connect. Alright, so I saved the connection here to save time. I'm gonna click on edit. I'm gonna go back to the box, start the machine. So once we are logged into the machine, you can see we have two icons. One is a log file for the process monitor and the other one is for auto run. We're gonna need these actually. So we're gonna go ahead and open both of them. And of course, don't forget to open the event viewer in order to investigate logs most of the wor our work will be with powershell so also i'm going to open powershell i'm placing too much overload on the machine i hope the machine can withstand the pressure so after open event viewer one thing i recommend guys is to extract the related e event log to a file so we can investigate that with PowerShell. Some of the questions can be answered from the event viewer interface. Some of them might be easier to answer using PowerShell. We're gonna see why later in the video. So now that we open the process monitor, that's fine. PowerShell is here. And also auto run is opened. So let's open the applications and service logs. It's a bit laggy the machine doesn't have the required resources to process all of that in a fast manner so we're gonna have to wait a bit okay so let's proceed to answer the first question okay what is the registry key with the encoded payload 
So this question can be answered from the event viewer from PowerShell and also can be answered from the auto run. So if you go to auto run, you see here we have two processes highlighted with um, yellow. One is with called 3000 and the other one is updater. And we also see the correspondent registry key. If we maximize the view here and make the image path drag this to the right, we can see here the full image path. And we see it encoded actually PowerShell dash win hidden dash encoded. And we have, as you can see here, a variable called X supposed to hold the payload value. Um, we can also see the correspondent registry key. If we navigate now to the registry and we open the registry editor, okay so now we navigate to the path microsoft windows is actually here it's already here because i did that before if you go to run we don't see anything let's go to current version under the current version you see a registry key value called debug and you see the value is based in base 64. Now what we're gonna do here we're gonna take this and go to cyberchef to decode the full payload so cyberchef that is the PowerShell payload, by the way. So from page 64, and we see the full payload. It's recommended, guys, to copy that to a text file. I did that already in Sublime. So I copied the decoded payload here, starting from here. And I did the same for this page 64 payload. And the decode process resulted in this other payload. So right now I have the two payloads decoded. Let's proceed now and put the answer for the first question so what is the registry key with the encoded payload it is this one you can take it from here and answer with it of course um, don't forget the run uh, sorry the debug to type debug here because it's the real value what's the real name for this run key generated by sysmon right now we have to do a little bit of investigation on the logs so let's get back now and see what happened with the event viewer so we go to applications and services logs navigate expand the microsoft windows scroll all the way down and so we find the sysmon so the sysmonitor is here okay operational and we can see all of the events or all of the sysmon events total of 3408 my recommendation guys is to save that to a file and name it sysmon select display information for these languages united states english click on ok and that's it so let's go get back to the question now what is the rule name for this run key generated by sysmon so the key to answer this question is to find out what is the event id for uh, the uh, registry key editor so for adding a value or creating a key the event id is 14 according to the documentation of uh, sysmon so i have put all of these in the notes here i have for uh where is that 14 it's not document 13 sorry it's th 13 so for event ID 13, registry value set, we're going to need to find out uh, the, where is this? Okay. The rule name for this event. So we're going to get back and use the filter. Click on filter current log and type here 13. Click on OK. And we will see all of the events. I know it's very kind of tedious to sift through all of these events. That's why I recommend using PowerShell. Otherwise, you're going to have to go through these, every one of these until you find out the one with PowerShell. So instead, what we're going to do, we're going to use now PowerShell. So since now we have saved the output to a file called sysmon, let's open PowerShell and enlarge the font, make this 24. Okay, that's fine. See the desktop. So here we go. Let's now investigate this file. I know it's very hard to memorize comments. That's why we have something called the notes. So let's see here how can we filter 
the logs for this event ID 13. So let's see. Um, this one seems okay. Okay, let's take this one and modify on this one. Paste that here and let's do the modification on this one. So basically, the file name is sysmoon. Sysmoon. And now, as you can see, we will get one event cmdelet, provide the path for the event, uh, the, the event log file, filter the path. Of course, here we put the event ID we are trying to find. It is 13, and then we sort them by time created, descending order. And lastly here, we put a keyword. By this keyword, we are trying to, of course, match all of the event events whose ID equals 13 and contain the keyword we put here. Since we're looking for the event that contains the encoded payload, we can either use partial or the word encoded. If we hit enter now, it's going to display the event. Until that is done, let's find that out with event viewer, see which one is faster. Use defined here and type encoded. Okay, I think we found it. So this is the event actually. As you can see, the ID is 13 and this is the rule name. Let's see that in partial. So this is the event in partial, this is the event ID, and this is the encoded payload. Or this is the payload that's using an encoded value, X. And we see the rule name that triggered the event, T1547.001. This is the answer for the question. What tactics is classified with this MITRE ATT and CK? So we go to MITRE, ATT and CK, and we search for this. Let's see here, we have one hit, we click on that. What's required? Find the tactic. So this is technique and the related tactic is persistence, privilege, escalation. This is your answer. What was the UTC time for the sysmoon event? We get back and we find that the UTC time, UTC time is here, written here. It's very easy to find. Going back, what was the sysmoon event ID? It was 13, event type. Again, you can find the event type by taking a look at the event type here, and it is set value. Straightforward. Decode the payload. What service will the payload attempt to start? Now we get back to Cybertrif, and as I told you earlier, copy the decoded uh, command to a payload to your text editor. You will see that it starts the fax service, right? And of course, there is a local port open on the machine, 9299. So this is what it's doing, actually, the payload. It's starting a service called fax and then opening a port 9299, maybe to connect to that through the C2 server. That's the uh, service. The payload attempts to open a local port. We answered that already. What process does the payload attempt to terminate? The answer for this part is by decoding this payload, the sub payload, let me call it. Once you decode that, you will find that it is trying to kill a process called FXSSVC. And this is your answer. What DLL file does the payload attempt to remove? Again, you can find that from the code. So you get back and we notice that it's trying to remove the file. Where is the file? Trying to remove, let's see here. So. Okay, here it is. So remove item path, and the path is C Windows System 2 UAL API DLL. This is something I have to do with the actually uh, the print service. Let's go back now and answer this question. So this is the path. What is the Windows event ID associated with the service? Which service? The uh, fax service. So we're gonna have to search Windows logs for this string. I guess we're gonna find a match, and from this match, we're gonna put the ID here. Uh, I know actually the some of the questions are kind of vague, so you're gonna have to understand the full flow of the events in order to accurately answer the questions. Unfortunately, that's the fact about this room. So go to now, go back, and in Windows here, we're gonna look for, see if you have something that has to do with the faxing. Fault. What about printing? print service, print something. So print service, if 
we expand collapse this we have admin and we have operational yeah we have one here and if you click on that let's take a look the default printer was changed to print diamond see the event user for data if you click on details to get more details about this it will display that in xml format xml so event id is 8 to 3 and it is windows print service slash admin and it has to do with the print diamond demon print demon okay so that's the answer what is listed as the new default printer let's go back see the message the general the default printer was changed to print demon that's the name of this what process is associated with this event and without looking actually at the event it's very well known that the process responsible for printing operations is the spool sv.exe if you want you can get back and see the process id 2684 if you look at the uh, filter here of course this is the logs of this process monitor make sure to open all of the logs files on the desktop so of course we're going to need these for the answer Now we're going to filter and PID. See here what's the PID? 2684. Um, this one. 2684. We add this to the filter and we apply. Oh, what's that? It is the explorer. This is no way correct. Let me get back and cancel this one. It should be the, the spooler service print spooler service but it is not here let's see why um print diamond all right what's process is associated with this event uh-huh let's see back we have this dll how come it is showing explorer so there must be something not right here or or the question is referring to another event not this one it is the one here i, I understand your frustration guys it's uh, the, the wording is not so clear so i remember now i found the answer by looking at the event here 13. so let's get back and filter for event 13 which has by the way the dll value here so we can search for the dll by the way going to going back to here and go to sys monitor again sys monitor where is the sys monitor and filter for this word we have one click on this one details process id 1308 okay let's find this in the process monitor log 1308 1308 and apply and it is this monitor what's happening here let's get back i think i started to mess up in here so this is Uh, not this one actually nope yeah the same dll name but it's a different event we're gonna have to find one the one that has to do with the registry so um, we're gonna use partial for this actually let's scroll, go back and again use this one and here we're gonna use the dll name ual api And we're going to modify the filter path and use the event id 13 because this is the event id we are working with for this question so we're going to paste this and enter uh, 
I think we got something wrong where object okay let me get back and take the full command from here we copied that two times okay so here ual api dot dll and event id 13 i'm using partial by the way because it's easier to find all of the events related to that what is this doesn't exist now oh, i couldn't modify i didn't modify the file name so the file name here should be sysmonitor okay and here we can continue looking by the way for this dll until we hit one so we have nothing here okay back to partial and again it's the same one boot or log on auto start execution event id 13 and this is the process Process ID 1596. I looked in the wrong place in the XML view. It's not the correct place. So if you now go to back, go back here and filter for, remove this one, and type here. 1596. 1596. That's if you want to answer the question this way, by the way. But it's very well known that it is the principal or the spool SV responsible for these kind of operations. And finally, it is the spool SV now. All right. So I proved my point. Let's get back. What's the parent PID for the above process? From the as from the view here, we can right click and go to properties, process stack event. In the event, it should write the PID. Parent PID here is six twenty two. Okay, get that out of the way. Examine the other processes. What is the PID of the process running the encoded payload? Um, I think it's very clear by now what is the process running the encoded payload, right? It is PowerShell because the PowerShell is used actually to find or to launch the payload. So it's very clear to uh, how to answer the question. But how to find the PID, by the way? You can go back and here filter the same. You remove the old filter, remove and type in here. The process name contains PowerShell and if, this way you can extract the PID contains apply oh I didn't add this okay add this one fine and it is 3088 out of the way decode the payload what is the invisible what is the what is as you can see what is the a visible decode the payload what is the visible partial path back to the payload we're gonna look the, for actually we're gonna look for the only visible path in here. It's very clear that it's this one. It's the only path. You're gonna they're gonna find anything else, and it's clear that the payload is actually connecting to some C2 server, uh, and the file name is get.php. That's the path. All right, next one. This is the default communication profile the agent used to connect to the attack machine. What attack framework was used? What's the name of the variable? Now this is referring to the C2 server, by the way. It is asking what attack framework has been used to create a PowerShell uh, encoded payload and what is the variable name that is used to listen for incoming connections. So now if you visit Google or if you go back to the machine itself, there is a file on the documents, the third file, PowerShell transcript. If you inspect the file, you will see here line saying function invoke ps inject if you google this you're going to find that this is uh, connected to the partial empire that's how you find the framework for the profile if you go to this link and here you can see how to create listeners in partial our part is creating an h to be listener why h to be listener by the way if you go back to the payload you see this part slash admin slash get.php this is a path on the web and if you decode this part you can get the ip address itself so i did that already here and this is the ip address of the c2 server and this is the port listening on that's why we're looking to find out what are the various options 
That's why we're going to need to go through the various options presented when you create a HTTP listener. So listener is 101. The first one is use listener HTTP. And let's take a look at the options. So this is the bind IP, third path, cookie, default play, default jitter, and you had default profile, default communication profile for the agent. And we see the various paths we can use as values for this variable. So here you go, the answer for this question. And the next one is answered already here for the options. Lastly, what is the MITRE HTT and CK URL for the attack framework? Now, if you go to, again, uh, MITRE and type Empire yeah you will find this one but let's go through that Empire and this is the link what was the fully qualified domain name of the attacker machine that the suspicious process connected to how do how do we find this okay so we found that this is the IP address right now a simple NS lookup will find the answer. So if you go back to the machine and type NS lookup, and in here we copy the IP address 34245. Let's copy that and format this through the command line. So okay. And this is the fully qualified domain name. Oh, no, this one. Amazon. So the guy, uh, actually the compromise or the guy seems to uh, use some sort of online instance or the cloud to connect or to control the machine. How, how dare? Okay. What other process connected to the attacker machine? To answer this question, guys, you can answer two ways. The first one is to filter uh, Sysmon events through the event ID3 looking for network connections or simply if you don't want to touch partial you can go to the event logs here or the process logs and you can filter for operation and is type in here TCP connect see what are the other processes connecting or yeah uh, communicating with targets outside the machine so remove this one and apply so we have total of th two the ones we are interested in are these because they contain the fully qualified domain of the c2 server one of the processes is explorer the other one is partial that's how you mark the answer for this question what's the pid uh, no brainer guys you can find it here two six eight four what is the path? What was the path for the first image loaded for the process identified in 19 and 20? So you're gonna, gonna have to find out what is the first image or the library file has been loaded by the explorer.exe. So we're gonna go back to the logs here and use two filters. Filter and here. Yeah, we're gonna remove this one and put here the PID is 2684. add apply okay let's now filter for operation the operation will be load image so op is load in order to find out the image loaded so add apply and this is the path for the full image loaded it's actually a DLL file what sysmon event was generated between these two processes it took me years to answer this but anyway let's answer that in two minutes what is it associated event id what are these two processes referred by this question the first one is the explorer the next one is the partial how to find out the one or the event between these two processes we're gonna have to find out the time of this process it was created and the time for the partial process between these two times we're going to filter events and find the right uh, event so go back and pull up partial again and we're going to need to match events for a specific time so we're gonna see here okay scroll down so what do we need to do here 
we're going to need to find out the time for for the explorer and the time for Parsha. Okay. So let's find uh, filter uh, these two events or these processes and find the related time. So I don't need these. Let's scroll down. Let's see here. What do we have? Okay, how about we use this one, the same one? So we're actually now we're actually now finding the time at which the payload was executed, or the event, the time of the event that referred to the partial, and the time of the event that referred to the explorer exe when it stored the registry key. So the first one here is event id equal 13 because we're looking to find out the event for the registry value key set through which the payload was registered as a key value in the registry and here of course we're going to keep it the same encoded because we're looking for the exact same payload and the file here will be sysmon Okay, now that's the time when the event was triggered. We're going to take this as a note, put it somewhere. Let's open and copy that. Um, don't need this one. Let's open a new notepad editor and type in this time, say explorer. .exe. And the next one is, now this one is partial. Not explorer, right? Yeah, explorer, right? That's all right. The next one is we need to find out the time, exact time of the event when the PowerShell payload was or the PowerShell process was created. So we're going to use the same methodology here. Change this to event ID th from 13 to 1. And message like we're going to use PowerShell here. We need to find out the exact time when the PowerShell process was spawned. So we got too many. So there must be another way to find the answer for this. Let's scroll back. I'll go back here. Make sure that the event ID was correct. So event ID 1 was process creation. Okay, and event ID 13, registry value key set. So what are we missing here? Let's scroll down and or go back. Let's cancel this part. So with our PowerShell, let's see these. Again, we have several. Aha, uh -huh, no. How about we change from PowerShell to encoded since also the partial process uses an encoded payload. Let's see here. And it was, this is was it. As you can see, the process is partial. The parent image is partial as well. And the time is this one. So we take this and put it down here, PowerShell PXD. So now we take these two values and set them as values for two variables the two variables will be used as time periods and we're going to filter between these two time periods in order to find the answer for the question so open a variable called start time equal let's see here so i remember it was like that yeah and we paste this set in the time the start time is this one the one for partial and time equal and this is the end time up 
What's that? Okay, okay. Okay, now we use a partial command to filter between these two time periods. So, this is the one. I'm going to copy this one, save the time of typing this one, and do the modifications. So, again, change on the file name. It is this moon. And here we filter using the where object. The time curated is the start date, and the time, the next one for the end time is the end time variable will be used so right now we are filtering for the time period between these two variables and we sort them according to the time created lastly and we hit enter you can do the same in the event viewer but it didn't work for me you can use the filter log you can use here um, time range and you can put in here plug in the values for the first event and the last event but it didn't work for me so I'm gonna cancel this one and go back. This will give us the answer for this question. And we will answer this, the other rest of the questions by looking at this event, by the way. So we are nearly done. What is what sysmoon event was generated between these two processes what is is its associated event id yeah let's see here all right so as you can see we got all of the events in this time period between 508 and 50 okay we got other several stuff all right no problem so the first one was 508 as an end time and the start time is 505 so we're going to start from here 505 we need to find it the the, the, the uh, event id this moon event id between these two processes so we got several actually but if we look close we can see that first we have file create press create 505 yeah and then actually it is before the 45 so we're gonna start from here at 45 so this is our starting point process create here the partial was spawned all right next file created registry object added for the payload file delete image loaded and then you have the network connection and create remote thread here where the process hook has happened as you can see, create a remote thread several times, the event was triggered, and then we have the rest of the events. So, we start from here as the first event ID that's different from the ones before. The ones before have to do with the partial. Next, we have create remote thread. The event ID is 8, and if we want to see details about this one, we're going to need to take the event id here as 8 and find the details for this event so again we're going to take this one nope okay and change this part No need for that. We put FL to display the properties and we put here event ID 8. And change the file name to sysmoon. And again, we got several others. Let's scroll down. Not too much. We're going to need to highlight the one with the time we want. So I'm going to scroll up again and grab the time so create remote thread was was here this is the time I'm gonna create a variable that stores the value 
say here um, date equal and we're gonna get the rest of the string from here so get date dash slash date all right and now we're gonna find the corresponding event to this date so let's take um, this one yeah so this one you can filter through or you can find the event id or the event details through the time filter so we take this one and we paste it except we're gonna have to modify some stuff including the file name or the file name sysmoon and see the event details So right now we are displaying the details of the event that created at this time which is the one we want so part of the question has been answered create remote thread and here is the eight now to answer these questions we're gonna look at the details the utc time and the pm time so let's see what happened all right next one what is the first operation listed by the second process all right we're gonna need to answer this one first before jumping to the next ones and we don't have anything uh, left last four questions and we are done okay so that's the first one this is the time curated and this is the utc time What is the first operation listed by the second process? Starting with the date and time from question 25. So we can take the ID here and we can filter using the filter we have. So delete this one, press ID will be delete this one also. Add okay what is the first operation scroll up so the first operation we have process start and then we have thread create by the second process so why it's thread create because it's by the second process the first process is the same yeah but it's for process start okay what's the full registry path that was queried by the attacker to get information about the victim now to answer this question it requires a bit of research so it requires you to find out what is the registry key that is queried actually what it is normally used to query the windows information it is the release id by the way and you can just go to filter and from here you can search for or filter through the path 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 man okay and here it contains type release remove the previous one apply and you have these as you can see these are the ones used to query the windows uh, information actually what's the name of the last model in the stack from this event which had a successful result okay let's see here we right click process stack the last one is called unknown most likely what module within the attack framework was used between the two processes most likely what module within the attack framework was used between the two processes why it is this one let me tell you why if you remember the event that triggered between the partial and explorer from this question when we answered this question the event was create remote thread and create remote thread in another word it's called process injection now if you search for partial empire process injection module you will land uh, at this page you have this one let's see this one so it is as you can see invoke ps inject 
What's the MITRE ID for this technique? I'm going to leave this for you. It's very easy. Just go to the MITRE entity and CK and search for the process injection. You will find that this is the ID.